All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, in the middle of the sleepy period of the day. Uh, so we'll see what we can do about that. Anyway, um, so, you know, there, as I was listening this morning, I heard quite a few uh, interesting conversations. Uh, most of them revolved around cancer care. And most of them revolved around, mostly specifically around genetics or genomics. That's the nature of this workshop. But I'm going to offer some other opinions and then take us down another path with a provider perspective. Um, so first of all, let me say that, um, you know, the round table is really on genomics or genetics and precision health. And, and, and let me just say that I think we really also want to think about that last part. Precision health, in my mind, is not just about genetics or genomics, but rather about the environmental exposures, the patient preferences that people have when they experience care, their social determinants, their psychosocial factors that influence or impact whether or not a genetic predisposition leads to a specific condition or disorder. And how those things play together is really this, the secret uh, that, that we're going to in the future. So the, the action really, you know, for lack of better terms, is in, is in the interaction between the two of them. So let me start that off by also then saying that it's not that I don't believe in genetic medicine. I do absolutely believe that there are, are uh, many advances we have already made and that we can make. But to take the next step, we also have to consider every, all of these other environmental wh exposures. Why is it you know, that, that certain people will develop a condition and other people will not? And a lot of that has to do with the things that they, they are exposed to during their life. The other thing I want to say is that we spend a lot of time in this field thinking about, uh, about cancer, and, and, and rightly so. We've made the most advances in cancer care uh, in, in, this, in this field. So why not continue to, to focus on that? Well, I want to introduce another area. I heard uh, somebody earlier introduce the idea of disabilities Along the same lines, I want to introduce the idea of mental health conditions. And the reason I want to do that is because 25%, uh, so about a quarter of the U.S. population at some point during their lifetime will meet symptoms or criteria for a mental health condition. A quarter of the, of the country. And yet this is one of our hidden diseases that just sort of is buried. We provide care in separate facilities for mental health condition. They, uh, it's the, you know, the ugly duckling of the medical field because nobody wants to deal with it, and they, just, they don't want to even ask about it because if they ask about it, then they have to do something about it. Uh, so it, it is an interesting challenge. Uh, and there are very interesting uh, uh, provider challenges as well. Um, so to set that stage, I mean, what, one of the problems is, is that, you know, you, you, you see that it takes, it takes at least five to eight years from the onset of a mental health condition until somebody actually gets the first care for that, that condition. We were talking about six months, which was horrible this morning, for cancer care. Can you imagine waiting eight years before? And... During a given year, 20 plus million people have a substance use disorder, and yet less than 5%, 5 million of those people actually are in active treatment. And that's not because they are choosing not to get treatment. Sure, people choose not to get treatment for a lot of conditions, and that makes up part of it. It's a patient preference. But beyond that, the very nature of a mental health condition you know, prevents you from accessing care. And so this is one particular area that we need to think about because not only are psychiatry, psychiatric conditions themselves, their own field that also have early uh, genetic markers for increased risk, but 
Also, it is one of the few actual conditions that is a cross-cutting theme that happens across all conditions. And people with mental health conditions are, by definition, or if you look at it, less likely to be able, or they're disproportionately able to access care. They're disproportionately able to even get the same care, even if pre presented in front of the same, uh, with the same opportunities. So I want to start also by just giving you a little bit of background. Uh, I am uh, from Henry Ford Health System, a large uh, healthcare system in, in southeast Michigan in the Detroit metropolitan area. We are both a urban hospital, one of the, uh, one of the premier hospitals in, in, uh, in downtown Detroit. You can imagine that, that Detroit uh, has its own challenges with a lot of access to care issues. But we have a unique perspective because we provide insurance through our own insurance company to, to about 20% or 15% of our patient population. And yet the rest of our patients are either from commercial, other commercial insurances or largely from Medicaid or non-insured patients. We have both the fully covered HMO population, which uh, has the full access to comprehensive uh, care, and we also have a, Medicaid, a large Medicaid population and a large, large under, underinsured population. We provided more than $350 million of uncompensated care last year. So uh, we have expertise. We're building a brand new state-of-the-art cancer center. And we are also part of the NIH's uh, All of Us Research Program, which is the new precision medicine program. I'm co-leading our, our consortium at Henry Ford. But I also want to say that we have expertise in psychiatry, and that's sort of the bent or angle that I'm going to talk about a little bit here uh, in the next few minutes. So, um, so I, now this is an interesting thing, because, uh, but it particularly is important to patients with psychiatric condition, is that actually health providers have their own worldviews and biases about the way that they provide care for patients. Can you, uh, most providers are, or not most providers, but some are, are less likely to want to treat people with, with mental health conditions, and they're less likely to offer certain services to people with mental health conditions. That's not necessarily their fault, but they actually just don't know what to do. For, from, from, from all of our, did you know that even in the field of psychiatry, we have this burgeoning problem of suicide in this country? You've heard about it all the time in the last, in the last few weeks especially. But there, even in the field of psychiatry, there's not a single discipline, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, psychiatric nurses, that are required to take any training on suicide prevention. And believe it or not, that, that is even, uh, e even worse in, in, the, in the field of all of medical care. So if we want to talk about access to genomic medicine, don't you think that that access is going to be disproportionately uh, less, there's going to be disproportionately, um, you know, access to, to people with mental health conditions. And think about how we provide care uh, in our medical centers, that, that there are so many people that have a uh, pain condition and a psychiatric condition. Those people are less likely to get care for the pain condition. They're suffering from a disease which by itself prevents you from, from having the energy or ability or neurological functioning to be able to seek more care or to understand the system, which is by definition more complex for us. So I'm not just throwing out challenges, but I think some of these things we just don't even think about in, 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 uh, in medical care, even though a large proportion of our patients have these conditions. Um, and we tend to have different views on people that we on people with conditions that we think are behavioral versus like you should just get better yourself versus conditions that we think are are biological or or genetic uh, in nature. But there are actually genetic markers for most of the mental health conditions, including for increased risk for suicide. Uh, 
uh, and for likelihood of, of developing an addiction like our opioid epidemic that is going on right now. Uh, I'll continue. Um, people have to make decisions about how, who's going to get access to care. As a provider, you know, when I, if I see a patient, I need to make a decision about who's going to get access to genomic medicine. And that medicine, or precision medicine, is a very complex process. We heard all the stories this morning about that. Uh, but, but, um, but if I'm sitting here trying to make a decision about whether to refer my patient, but that patient has a cognitive disability, or that patient has a mental health condition or a drug addiction, particularly we think that that person should get better on their own, or, or even doesn't want to get care for their mental health condition, we're much less likely to give them access to a new state-of-the-art treatment, even for their general medical condition, because we have this attitude or belief, and it's, it's real, that they won't show up to their next meeting. So we talked about equality and equity this morning. Sometimes people just need a little bit extra help. And I, and I thought that was so perfect for this, uh, this field because, you know, uh, people with mental health conditions do need a little bit extra help. And, and that means that because it, it's a lot more difficult to get the care they need, not because they don't want it, but because their condition is also preventing them from getting the care. Um, so people have different levels of insurance. In Michigan, you know that even in our own behavioral health department, in a well-resourced healthcare system with all of the services, our patients with substance use disorders cannot get care in our system. If as soon as we identify a substance use disorder, if they have Medicaid, we have to refer them to community mental health. Even though we have way more resources and, and uh, and, and it's a, so we're refer, we have to refer them to a public mental health system. That's the law. We can't provide treatment or we won't get reimbursed. Isn't that a, a messy situation? And all of our system has, uh, and we have a lot of Medicaid patients who are disproportionately in behavioral health compared to other uh, conditions. And, if, and imagine that if every person with different types of insurance has a different process. From a provider's perspective, what do I do? Every time I gotta figure out, okay, well, what does Medicaid do for this patient? And then what does is, what is, uh, this insurance company do for this patient? And what does this other insurance company do for, and then what do I do for most of these people who don't have insurance? So all of these different avenues cause problems. And I'm, I'm almost done here, but um, uh, it is going to be extra work for us to get access to genetic medicine or precision medicine for people who have mental health conditions because of the different streams of coverage that we have to deal with. Uh, and there are massive workforce shortages. Even though I believe we have enough resources in this country to be able to solve these problems, as somebody mentioned earlier, we have to spend a little bit more time upstream preventing conditions before they turn into crises, rather than only treating crisis events, we need to think about treating prevent, acting as a prevention in prevention. Uh, and it takes a long time to get into care. So I'm I I um, and and certainly there is a wealth of more knowledge about precision medicine, the opportunities for precision medicine in cancer than there is in, than there is in other other fields. Um, but I think, in a, you know, for, let me just end by offering some, some opportunities for, for uh, hope. Um, I think we could uh, uh, turn the tables on this. Now, it, it will be a fully actualized model before some of this changes. But if we talk about having limited appointment time slots, workforce shortages, the thing that will really help that is by getting more specific about tailoring people's, t people's treatments. If we can have, get someone into an appointment time slot, identify their challenge, 
and route them right into the right treatment. This is one of the major problems with psychiatry is it's very difficult and we have to try multiple different doses of multiple different medicines, multiple types of psychotherapy before we get the right uh, option. And we can customize treatment. If we can slim that down, then more people will have access and we can get people in the door quicker and treated better and they're more likely to stay in care rather than having 14 failed attempts of their treatment and then they just give up. Uh, I, I think um, we need to think about how uh, widespread coverage of insurance may, uh, and, and the greater uptake of this in insurance may offer more options for treatment because this is a very, it's thought of very highly. If there really was a solution to tailoring treatments, there will be more options for insurance coverage and we will have an opportunity to cover people not by specifically tailoring treatment plans to insurance coverage. Um, but I can talk more later, but I'm, I'm done. <laughs>